Hey, what's good YouTube? In this video, I'm sharing some actionable and practical advice that will help you to develop the mindset of a resilient and resourceful entrepreneur. This video will help you to willingly embrace failure, take more calculated risks, and ultimately really help you to develop a purposeful business mindset. By watching this video, you will learn how to view problems as opportunities and ultimately see the world through the lens of an entrepreneur. Furthermore, if you want to become the entrepreneur of your life, you can start this process today by subscribing to this channel. Also be sure to click that notification bell to be alerted for whenever new videos are uploaded. Are you ready? Hello everyone, welcome to the Reimagining Impact podcast presented by Let's Care in collaboration with Seedspot. My name is Matt Scott and today I have a very special guest, Craig Chavis Jr. Craig, how are you doing today? Man, I'm happy and healthy and uh, just super excited to chop it up with you today. Awesome, Craig. And just as we start out, I want to give you the chance to introduce yourself to the Reimagining Impact audience. So yeah, my name's Craig Chavis Jr. And I really define myself in two different ways. One as this mischievous <clears throat> alchemist who's always up to creating things. And then also secondarily as a modern Renaissance man because I've had a very non-traditional career path and I've got to experiment and fail forward with a lot of different things. But now I just choose to show up in this world as an interdisciplinary coach on a mission to help entrepreneurs find their purpose and create a life that they do not have to run away from. What is What was your experience like before 2020 um, in your life and in your work? Because um, we're definitely going to learn about your experience this year, but what were things looking like for you prior to this year and especially prior to the pandemic? Man, life's been one hell of a journey. And yeah. being an author, I like to tell stories because my, my life has been just like a story. I mean, I'm originally from... Cincinnati, Ohio, but growing up, I moved around a lot because of my father's job. And I had to get used to uprooting myself and uh, adapting to new cultures, different environments and meeting new people. And I, little did I know how that would help me become who I am today. But the one thing that kept me grounded was athletics. And I was good enough to get a division one football scholarship that took me down to Alabama. And my sophomore year, I got the opportunity to finally get some playing time and I suffered a career ending injury that uh, almost caused me to drop out. But this is when I started figuring out that nobody's self-made because my professor intervened in my life and did a study abroad in Costa Rica, which single-handedly changed the trajectory of, of my life. And I got hooked on this idea of becoming an international businessman. And I came back rejuvenated, started my first major business, which uh, allowed me to DJ and I had an entertainment company in Birmingham, Alabama, and I used those proceeds to go to Spain for six months. And uh, I really got locked in on this international business path. Um, I got out of Alabama, got my MBA in less than a year. And when I was finishing up, I was interviewing in New York and San Francisco at tech companies. And I just see myself just sitting in a cubicle all day for the, for the rest of my life. But life changed again when I met a Peace Corps recruiter at a Chipotle in Manhattan before I went back down to Florida. And she convinced me to apply for the Peace Corps. And I did. And that took me to Peru where I did economic development for two and a half years. But when I went down there, I had this idea of figuring out how to start my own business in another, in another country. I just didn't know how I'd do that. But on the side of me doing my consulting, I was working at a university and I befriended one of the distillers that worked at that uh, at that college and they taught me how to distill. And on the side, I would take the moonshine that I was making and I was selling it to a lot of the business clients that I had. And that just gave me the big idea to start a, a distillery in Peru, which I did. And I immigrated back to the country by myself and accomplished my dream. And so my whole book, Burdens of a Dream is about that path of intentionally becoming the entrepreneur of your life and living with positivity, purpose, and uh, having a positive um, outlook. And from, yeah. I never would have expected to experience what I've experienced. And since then I've had a blockchain startup 
that I founded in DC. And that's where I got into Seedspot. And yeah. that's we connected today. And after that whole process, that's when I decided to go into business coaching full time after I got my book deal. And um, 2020 has just been a great year for me because I'm so used to difficulties, uncertainty, and creating something out of nothing. So uh, yeah. good, man. I'm just embracing everything that I have today. Yeah. And I'm sure there are a lot of people who are doing a double take uh, because even thinking of the, the seed spot entrepreneurs featured in this series, there are people who have different experiences. There are some that, you know, have, have had challenges because of the pandemic, whether that's with their um, full-time work they're doing to support their business or with their actual business. There are others who've had challenges when it comes to just everything that took place after the police murder of George Floyd and with that, the, um, the growing really civil rights movement that's happening, the modern civil rights movement that's continuing on. And so something I'm curious to hear is just how those things, um, and, and really, I guess, starting with the pandemic, how that impacted your plans for your business and what you were creating? Well, the pandemic really caused me to pivot because prior to COVID-19, I was doing a lot of my coaching and training in person, on site. A lot of my public speaking engagements were at different corporations or at different conferences. And so not being able to do any of my business activities in person caused me to really force myself to think different and think outside the box. And I really mm-hmm. had to digitize what I was doing and also productize many of the services that I was offering. But to me, COVID was the biggest blessing in disguise because it forced me to create the business that I always dreamt of creating. And that was something that allowed me to live and work from anywhere. And now that we're speaking on Zoom, like we would have never met if it wasn't for COVID. And COVID's really allowed me to expand my influence, my impact, and my income because I'm allowed able to leverage the internet to do what I do. And so I'm just really thankful that uh, COVID happened because if not, I would have never grown to this level this quickly. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting to think about mindset in all of this. And just a, a follow-up question I have to that is as people wonder where that mindset comes from, because I think for a lot of us and for a lot of people to different degrees, they've been so impacted by COVID. So what, you know, what is it that allows you, um, if there's anything else, you know, that allows you to have that mindset that you have that is more open, more positive? You mentioned some of the experiences that you've been through, but I wonder, is there anything else that you chalk it up to? It's, I've embraced failure. And I see failure as a positive because in my book, I define fail an acronym, which means first attempt in learning. Mm -hmm. And because we're entrepreneurs, because we're living life, like every day is different. Like I define entrepreneurship as somebody taking a calculated risk to create something out of nothing and share it with the world. And so when you're creating something out of nothing, when you're doing something for the very first time, or when you're just living, inevitably, life's going to throw you curveballs. And so it's not really about how you get knocked down. It's about how you bounce back from experiencing those setbacks. Yeah. And so as long as you can look at every setback or every difficulty as an opportunity to learn, that's going to help you to advance forward. And it's just going to help you to change your perspective. Because when COVID hit, it's like, okay, what are my lessons that I could learn from this experience? And how could I leverage that to propel myself forward to the next day? Yeah. And a lot of people say, I've heard the phrase many times, maybe, maybe you have too, but uh, you know, the, the, a setback is just the setup for the comeback. And mm-hmm. I think that that's a powerful thing to keep in mind. Um, and you know, you're someone who works with, with businesses and with entrepreneurs mm-hmm. to support them. That's your business. So obviously I mentioned some of the challenges that have come up, but I'm curious, what are some of those Um, things that you've seen or uh, witnessed people um, going through and the challenges that you've witnessed them facing this year, just from your perspective as someone who's supporting those businesses and even putting out um, a book that is being read by many entrepreneurs? So the biggest difficulty or the biggest obstacle I see entrepreneurs running into is themselves. Mm. I found this out quick the hard way that the person that I see in the mirror is going to be my best friend 
or my worst enemy. Right. It's as simple as that. And so, as I mentioned, I've been through a lot of difficulties in my life. And through those difficulties, I had to suffer this thing called ego death because I used to show up in the world trying to prove myself right or prove myself wrong. But once I took myself out the equation, I just sought out the truth. I let the truth define whether I was right or wrong. And so I'm just going out to prove what is, and I've gotten out of my own way. And most people haven't gotten to that level of consciousness where they understand that like, it's not about me. It's really about showing up filled up and making this world a better place. And once you decide that that person that you see in the mirror is your best friend, then you've just removed a whole bunch of crap that's gonna allow you to level up 10 times quicker than other people who let their egos and themselves get in their own way. Yeah, if, if there's a seed spot entrepreneur who's listening and see, here's what you're saying and says, you know what, I could relate to that. Like, how is it that you coach them through that process and through that journey? Because again, this year has had a lot in general, there's always a lot that I think right. um, people like you're saying, there might be challenges that come up and a lot of things that um, uh, barriers that people might, um, I'll say place in their own way or manifest in front of them. But I wonder from you, how do you actually help them? How would you help that entrepreneur who's listening and facing that challenge navigate um, that challenge to go on to their purpose and their passion and truly living it? Well, the first place to begin is, is now. And I tell people when I work that who I work with, I say, if you don't know where to begin, look within because mm. people don't know who they are. And that's one of the biggest problems because if you don't know who you are, you don't know what you're made of, you're always gonna fall for the shiny object syndrome and you're gonna chase after what other people have instead of intentionally creating something of your own doing that's built around who you really are. Um, because one of my core methodologies as a coach is this concept of mutual value creation. And so when yeah. you in the business, it's really about creating value for others. And in return, that's when they pay you. Mm -hmm. But the best way to position yourself to do that is to build a business around who you are. So that starts yeah. identifying what you're great at doing and overlapping that with what you love doing. Because in business, if you don't stand out, you're never gonna make it. But mm. contraire, if you don't love what you're doing, you're not gonna endure because this journey is filled with so many ups and downs. You just won't mentally make it. But when yeah. you overlap and find what you're great at doing and what you love doing, and you position that to generate market demand, then that's, that's best of both worlds because you're doing something that you where you stand out and you're doing something that you love, then you're also doing something that people would gladly pay you for. And it's really that, but it all starts with you understanding who you are and what you're made of. Yeah. And it's it's powerful to to come back to that because so much of the time I feel like as entrepreneurs, we're focused on the landscape around us. We're focused on customers. We're focused on users. We're focused on funders. We're focused on, you know, others who could support our work. And we're not always necessarily focused on the thing that's closest to us and right in front of us in the mirror, as you were saying before ourselves. And one thing that's just so powerful about what you're saying and the work you're doing is that it starts with with yourself. And I think that's an important lesson for, for anyone who's tuning in that we do need to look in the mirror before we look around us to figure out who we're selling to or who's going to buy support, whatever the case might be. Uh, but are there- Yeah, is, can I follow up with that yeah, really quickly please. though? I was going to give you that space because you have so <laughs> yeah. much wisdom. Yeah, because like one of the number one things that customers look for is credibility. Yeah like if you're credible as a business person or as an entrepreneur you're going to lower their barriers to resistance and if i know that hey this guy craig he's been through the fire he's broken his legs he, he has some scratches he's he's not crystal clean because he, he's been through these ups and downs yeah i know through his experience that not only is he practicing what he preaches but he preaches what he practices and because of that I'll be more likely to at least listen to what he has to say. And so that credibility and that authenticity 
and what you're doing is crucial, but you can really only get there when you start with that deep self-analysis because you have to know thyself. And when yeah. you do that, you come off with a lot of strength, confidence, and credibility that's going to allow you to navigate this journey of entrepreneurship a lot easier than people who have not done that deep inner work because your external reality is just a reflection of your internal beliefs. And mm. if you don't believe you can do something, why should your customers? I mean, it's really that. Yeah. It really starts with you. Yeah. And the, the other piece um, is just that when it comes to you, like one way that you've told the story, told that story of your work is by publishing your book. Um, and so I wonder what, like what impact, I'm, I'm, I'm curious what impacts that book has had, but for others who want to find similar ways to, to share their story specifically, whether that's a book or something else, is there advice that you have for them to do that? Sure. I mean, everybody, just know that no matter who you're speaking to, everybody suffers from imposter syndrome at some point. Because I remember it like it was yeah. yesterday when I was just chilling at this networking event and I was talking to this guy and I shared with him a little bit of what I shared with you earlier. Yeah. He's like, Craig, you got a, you got a book in you, man. He's like, you should write a book. And I was just like, nah, you know, I, I, it's, it's nothing special. You know, I, I didn't really do anything that, that great. And he's like, are you, are you serious? Yeah. So later on, as I was just thinking about my previous experiences, his offer for this publishing deal transmuted from an offer into a calling. And so I, when, I, and when I was writing this book, I wrote it in less than three months because it was something that wasn't just a project. Like it helped me to relive all those memories and it helped me to heal myself. And as yeah. I wrote this book for other people, I was really writing it for myself as well. But it was, it's a win-win situation because I think you'll really resonate with this, but the dedication of the book is as follows. And I said, this book is dedicated to all those who dare to answer their calling, to abandon the status quo, follow the road not taken and discover the person they're truly meant to become. And yeah. so much as I was writing that for the reader, I was writing that for myself. And so just know that every, anybody who's listening to this realize that you're, you have your own inner creative genius and you have a story to tell as well. And the thing is, is that you better tell your story before somebody else does. Yeah. You really soak that up and embody that you won't be afraid to let the world know who you really are. And that's when everything's going to start to change for the better. Yeah, that's so powerful. And, and, you know, as we get closer to the conclusion of this interview, one question that I always ask at the end of my interviews is if your life were a book or documentary, what would the title be and why? But I know that your title would be burdens of a dream. And so uh, for, for, for those who are thinking about writing their own book or sharing their own story, what, you know, how, what, what's the why for that uh, title or what, like, where did you find that title um, in the process? Cause I'm sure a lot of people are struggling. What would the title of my book be if I'm going to follow in Craig's footsteps? So where did that come from? Uh, where did that title come from? Burdens of a dream, which you could get online, which I'm encouraging people to search for now. Man, so the day after I closed the doors to my distillery in Peru, that those those four words, burdens of a dream, popped up in my mind, and I wrote mm -hmm. it on a piece of paper. Yeah, fit you not. And that was I wrote the book in 2019. I closed my business in 2017. I still had that my other business files. And mm -hmm. after I got the book deal, I was going through all those notes. And like, I saw it and I was like, this is it. Because as I was writing the book, I realized that every dream has a cost. Like all these people want to be entrepreneurs. All these people want to start businesses, but they don't understand that like to step out on faith and manifest your dream into reality is an extremely difficult and arduous process. And there's a cost to pay for doing that. And that cost is a burden. But the thing is, is that if you're willing to pay the cost, if you're willing to endure, if you're willing to stay the course, you'll wind up creating a life and creating a dream and living a life that people cannot even fathom. And so this is just to let people know that like, yeah, 
the, the road not taken is a great path to take, but best believe that it, that it comes with a little bit of pain, but if you yeah. overcome that, um, the pain is more than worth it. Wow. That's brilliant advice. And I just want to give you the opportunity to share where people could follow you, where they could uh, learn more about your story. And of course, where they could get your book, um, at least this book, because I know you're, you're working on your next book already. Yeah. Well, the, the book too is actually a supplement. So it's actually a work because as a coach, I'm all about action. And I want my readers to not just only think critically, but also to analyze and apply the lessons learned that I dish out in, in the first book. But people can find more information about me on my website at creativecraig.com. And you spell that C-R-E, the number eight, I-V-E-C-R-A-I-G.com. And you can get my book, Burdens of a Dream, um, in different formats, such as paperback, hardback, audiobook, or ebook on amazon.com. Awesome. Thank you so much, Craig. And I'll just give you the space to close us out with any final words of wisdom for those who are listening from the Seed Spot community. Well, the first nugget of wisdom, since that's the subtitle of the book, is that realize that time is gold and money is silver. Um, people are always worried about where their next dollar is going to come from, but you could always use your mind to create money out of thin air. Like that's not a problem. Mm -hmm. But what you can never create and never get back is your time. So make sure that you're using your time worthy, like in the right way. And then the second thing is kind of repeating what I said earlier is that everybody suffers from imposter syndrome. Michael Jordan suffered from it. Michael Jackson suffered from it. <laughs> you know, Hillary Clinton suffered from it. Everybody suffered from imposter syndrome. Like everybody has a fear, we're all human. So just recognize that like, you, you're great, you have your own inner creative genius and don't be afraid to share that with the world. And then the last nugget of wisdom, the third one is just like, just don't get up, don't give up. Like anything great takes time to manifest into reality. And so if you wanna be great, if you're creating something great, understand that like, it's not gonna happen tomorrow. Just be consistent, keep putting one foot down in front of the other and eventually you'll wind up manifesting like your wildest dreams into reality. In sum, before you decide to become an entrepreneur, you should really first develop a purposeful business mindset. And by developing that purposeful business mindset, you will gain confidence, commitment, and clarity. So confidence is just belief that you can become an entrepreneur. Uh, clarity is knowledge on how you're going to create value of the world. And then commitment is just focus and persistence to endure uh, the rigors of the journey you're about to embark upon. So always remember that before you decide to become an entrepreneur, make sure you develop an entrepreneurial mindset. So if my question for you today is, what do you think is the most important characteristic of an entrepreneurial mindset? Drop your comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Until next time. Thank you.